Welcome to our series on managing election stress and anxiety. My name is Dr. Tofumi Oni, and I am a staff psychologist at Townsend University's Counseling Center. With me today is my colleague, who I'm really, really excited to be doing this with, and I'm going to let her introduce herself. Hi, everyone, and hi, Tofumi. Very nice to see you here today, virtually. Um, I guess I'll start with introducing myself. My name is Dr. Chiwei Ng. I'm also one of the staff psychologists at the, at the Counseling Center and the Diversity Coordinator of the Center. Thanks for having me here today. No problem, and thank you for being with me. Um, we are here particularly to speak about the presidential election that is coming up on November 3rd, to be exact. Um, and I know plenty of people at this point have been having lots of reactions. Um, for me in particular, I've been noticing myself a little bit more anxious um, as it gets closer and some nerves, that, um, a lot more stress about what's happening. Um, regarding the elections as well. Have you been noticing anything similar? Yeah, definitely. I can relate to a lot of what you just shared earlier um, to Fumi. Um, I too have been feeling um, worried and anxious about um, these upcoming elections and feelings get stronger each day as we get closer to the election. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people around me, um, my family and friends, um, as well as the students that we see at the counseling center, share a lot of the same um, concerns as well right and and i think it makes sense because for uh, for many people this particular elections feels like a very high stake one mm -hmm. not only at a personal level but the outcome of the election also has a significant implication on the right. direction that our country will be moving toward um, in the next four years and you know obviously longer as well mm -hmm. um, Speaking of which, I recently uh, read a survey done by a research firm, Gartner, and the results found that 47% of the 500 workers that they surveyed believe that even back in February, the 2020 election had distracted them from doing their jobs, mm -hmm. um, and that's almost half half of the uh, participants of the survey. And right. mind you, this is. Yeah, this survey was done in um, February, which was before the outbreak of coronavirus. Wow. Now, yeah, and with the pandemic um, and uh, obviously the racial uprisings in recent months and us getting closer to the election, I can only imagine that the number has grown up a lot um, and a lot more people are reporting feeling stressed because of um, this very divisive and intense election campaign. That is so interesting um, that you read that article because it just reminds me of a similar article that I read um, from APA, which just um, they noted that there's been like a 4% increase in um, people noting um, that they feel like very, very stressed by the election when they compared the 2016 election compared to this one. And so there are just so many reasons like what is there not to be stressed out about at this point um for so many people and so this particular election has been bringing um a lot more stress and anxiety than maybe normal for some people um as well as some other reactions that can really um impact people's mental health in particular true and the tricky part is that no one can really predict the outcome of this election, I mean, with any elections, um, but the uncertainty of how the election will go can bring up a lot of anxiety because you don't feel like you're in control. And mm -hmm. that feeling of being out of control oftentimes brings up anxiety, worry, and fear. The fear in particular, which is, um, you know, usually resulted from a perceived threat to one's sense of safety, autonomy and freedom and in, in a sense one's humanity uh, is at stake for this particular react, uh, election mm. um, and, and when that happens our body reacts by activating the, what we call the fight or flight response um, which includes reactions such as being hyper vigilant mm. um, hyper arousal you notice um, increase in your heart rate increase in blood pressure 
uh, maybe sweating a lot, um, and also being constantly tense and not being able to relax because you're you're constantly um, in that worry and, and anxiety and anxious state. And chances are, for many of us, the, the worries, the fear, and the bodily response to this perceived threat won't resolve until after the election. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And so, while we recognize that the next couple of weeks will remain stressful for a majority of us at this point, um, we do know that there are a lot of ways that we, and things that we can do to help us manage these stressors as well as the anxiety reactions that a lot of us are experiencing currently. Which is why, for the next four weeks, we will be um, starting and we will be doing a series. Um, which uh, every Tuesday will provide helpful tips and strategies for you, our audience, to manage election stress. Um, so please make sure that you tune into our social media platforms and that you follow along with us on this journey. Um, and that hopefully we will all be able to get through all of the stress and anxiety of this election that is coming up. So we hope to see you soon and we will continue to be posting so thank you again, Jiwei, for, for being part of this um, series with me, and I will be seeing you soon.